That's great. Okay. All right. All right, committee, we're going to call the uh, Clearview Economic Development Committee Advisory Advisory Committee meeting to uh, to order here for uh, for May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome uh, John Ferguson is our CAO. He's been with us just a little better than five weeks right now. Uh, John is going to be officially our staff resource for this committee. And I'm really glad that John was able to join us here today. I know he was busy at the last meeting. He was here in town. But he was busy because he's been out looking for housing. So I, I know that he's been doing some uh, visiting of different houses and so on. So <laughs> John, uh, welcome. And uh, these are our members right here, uh, Judith and uh, Bill and Kelly and Jen and Heather Harding and uh, the deputy mayor and myself and Jen, of course, Jen is our, uh, our admin assistant. So uh, John is gonna be available to us to, uh, as a staff resource as well. So nice to meet you, it. Bill. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Nice to meet you, Jen, Heather, Judith. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. Uh, and then uh, additionally, we are, of course, uh, welcoming Kelly Kramer and Heather Harding to this meeting as well. Uh, Heather, I saw you, you at the BIA. You were uh, nominated to be our member, and I appreciate you joining us. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Right on. And uh, Kelly Kramer, Kelly, you and I talked a couple of weeks ago that you were joining us, and so I'm really glad you're able to join us at this meeting today. Kelly's with the Chamber of Commerce, so we're really happy that uh, you're there too. All right, team, we got uh, we got a couple things to do here today, so we'll move on to declarations of pecuniary interest. Anybody got any declarations for today? Don't think there's anything that we're dealing with. Thank you. Okay, uh, committee approval of the agenda. Recommendation be it resolved. The Economic Development Advisory Committee hereby approve the uh, agenda, dated the uh, May the fourth, twenty twenty one. Is uh, a mover and seconder, and has anybody got anything to add? No? I'll move it. I'll move it. Gary and Bill, anybody got anything to add? No? Okay, then we'll just call all in favor. All in favor. Yep. And uh, that carries approval of the minutes is our next thing from April the 6th. Recommendation be it resolved, the Economic Development Committee hereby approve the minutes dated April the 6th, 2021. Um, a mover and seconder on the minutes. Who would like to do that? Okay, that'll be Bill, and that'll be Barry. There we go. Okay, and anybody got any questions about the minutes? Heather and Kelly, did you guys get them attached to your? You did, you did get them right. Okay, good. Just making sure because you guys are. I've read the last minutes. Okay, good. All right. Well, then I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And the uh, minutes carry. Thank you. All right. Anything arising from the minutes for any members? Anything that from the minutes you want to talk about? All right, I have one small report. Uh, I did meet uh, by telephone with uh, one of the owners of the industrial lands in Stainer. Uh, I had a good conversation with him. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to investigate uh, how they're doing as far as um, uh, representing, uh, you know, what, what businesses or, or if, if they're looking for any vacant, if they have vacancies on any of those properties, what the project is. And I was very surprised to hear that uh, they are, um, they have only one of those properties that is going to be vacant, but right now everything else has is, is already got somebody, a business who's interested in, uh, in setting up. Uh, the one gentleman I spoke to specifically about his property, the uh, intention is that they'll be starting their construction of their, uh, their building uh, sometime, it could be September or October. Uh, they hope that the, uh, the tenant is going to be occupying it sometime January, February. They're being really hopeful. However, they did note that there's a, a steel crisis right now, trying to get steel. So uh, it's, it's may delay it a little bit. If you're trying to build a little commercial slash industrial building, getting steel can be a challenge. So, so that's, that's good news. Um, and so I'm going to reach out to the owner of the other property that's, that is vacant. Uh, I got good information from this gentleman. So I'll, uh, I'll make another call and just to check in on, the, on them. But I just wanted to report back. That was in the minutes. That, uh, that we were talking about that. So I want to make sure you guys do that. Um, does anybody get anything else for business from the minutes? Yes, go ahead, Jen. So I had mentioned uh, last time that uh, I was going to meet with Amanda Murray um, at the tourism. Um, it, it, she's the community culture and tourism coordinator. So uh, I can forward my thoughts or I can explain them here um, and summarize them if you'd like. Um, if you want to give us a brief what happened and you can still forward your information to all of us if you like. 
Absolutely. So uh, just, uh, it was a very pleasant chat. We identified some areas of strength um, in the tourism group, but also a, a few areas of um, opportunity, um, especially around uh, social following, um, being able to track success of programs, um, analytics opportunities, um, as well as skill set uh, for the team. Um, also, one of the opportunities is obviously going to be lack of hospitality venues such as um, B&Bs and hotels. So that was one opportunity. Uh, what came out of it, and I will summarize these in notes to the committee, but um, tourism can be a driver of long-term economic development in, uh, in Clearview. And we believe that this is an area where new, um, new residents will become aware of Clearview through tourism activity. So including tourism as part of the economic development plan is recommended. So I will be able to summarize my notes and forward to the committee in the next couple of days. That's fantastic. That's exactly, exactly what we wanna hear. Thank you for that, Jen, I really appreciate that. Has anybody got any questions? But then, all right, oh, thank you, Jen. Uh, anything further uh, in the uh, business arising from the minutes from our last discussion? All right, don't see anything. Okay, um, the financial report, I guess there isn't anything at this time. Um, I do wanna acknowledge John, our CAO. John, uh, we do have a little bit of a budget that this committee does have some access to. Um, certainly, uh, I would think that we'll need to have a conversation with Terry and or Amanda uh, as tourism, as Jen just mentioned, tourism is, uh, is important, that we may want to uh, either co-op with the tourism department and, uh, and or uh, support uh, publishing uh, or even working on our website a little bit. So you may want to have a conversation with uh, Terry, uh, he's his department looks after that. I just want to give that you as some advice Terry, to you, John. Um, Anybody got any questions in finances? I know we've, we've talked about it at the last couple of meetings. All right. So item nine on our agenda is about the downtown, making your downtown look great by Roger Brooks. He's quite a character, that Roger Brooks. If you've ever watched his videos about tourism and economic development and chambers of commerce, he's uh, he, he doesn't hold back, does he? I mean, if he says, what's going on? That building's empty. Like he's, he means it. Like it's, it's pretty interesting to watch. So. Uh, Kelly, did you want to speak about this? Uh, yeah, so one of our members asked us to watch that. So I did uh, sign in and watch it. It was a really good uh, summary of how to make your downtowns uh, come to life and how they can help you build your businesses there. Uh, there was an attachment. I was trying to find the actual YouTube video from that session um, and he was supposed to share it and I haven't got it yet. I've emailed him again today and if I get it, I'll forward it to you. Um, but going through the pictures of uh, what they recommend to build up your downtown and to get people to stop, some of them are very inexpensive. The flowers we're already doing, uh, the chamber's working with the downtown and we're getting the flowers. They should be out, I think the end of May, we have to wait for the street cleaning uh, but we've already got the uh, pots and everything going. So the chamber's already taken care of that. Uh, there were a few things in there that really sort of perked me up because one thing I find, especially with our downtowns, I'm not so sure about Clearview or Creemore because I haven't been down there at night, to be quite honest. I'm always there during the day, but I know from Stainer, it is a dark area. And one of the things that really jumped out at me was uh, he suggested using LED lights on the storefronts and having them do their storefronts up. So when people are driving through at night, they're going, whoa, that looks great. And it makes them want to come back the next day or very shortly thereafter. So uh, you might not be open, but you're still going to grab people's attention with a nice storefront that's well lit. Um, the LED lights aren't that expensive. So I'm not sure how our budget works with um, this with the economic development, if that's something we might want to offer some of our businesses is inexpensive LED lighting for their front windows to help draw attention for when people are going through Highway 26 at night and see what we actually have in our storefronts. So there's little things like that, that they were, he was mentioning that aren't a lot of cost uh, that really perked up the downtowns that he was showing and they were in the pictures. And as soon as I can get that uh, video link, I'll try and share it out with you guys. Very good. 
uh, Jen, I think the link was attached to somewhere. It was, it may have been just directly on the website as part of our, our agenda. Is, is that, is that where it is, Jen? I don't know if you can just make sure that it pops into everybody's email. Cause I'm, I'm I have seen it already, Kelly. So it is out there somewhere. The one that was on the, uh, the link isn't the one that I saw. So he's, oh. he's done an update of that as of last month. So this was more of a, a presentation he did. This one was right. more a Zoom meeting and it was uh, more detailed. It was a great, absolutely a great video to watch. Okay, the, the video link that I have access to is um, a presentation he did to upstate New York in the Genesee Valley. Um, and he talked about uh, uh, the, the little small uh, villages and so on that uh, are trying to promote themselves uh, and they're all sort of uh, surrounding uh, the Finger Lakes region, which is a big tourism area, obviously. Um, anyway, the video was was quite good, and there was a couple items in it that I I caught my or caught my attention. So uh, I think it's great. Has anybody else had a had a chance to review that video, or have you, you guys familiar with Roger Brooks? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's got some pretty impressive stuff to talk about. Did you have a look at it, Judy? Judith? Um, not not the. YouTube video. I scrolled through the the one PDF that was attached. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, Heather, you were jumping in and out there on the uh, on the call. Uh, Kelly did mention something about the um, uh, the BIA. Um, how's the? Uh, do, do you know if the members in the BIA are are using any lighting to enhance their storefronts uh, as part of the uh, the downtown programming? Is that something that you guys are doing in the BIA? Uh, the BIA, the Creamer BIA does talk a lot about lighting um, yeah. here. We have, um, our issues are we don't have power in the street, so they've been talking about that. Uh, we haven't talked about window lighting, so that's another idea to take back to the, to the group. All right. Anyway, okay, well, that's great, Heather. Uh, it's always on our mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is actually, isn't it? I, yeah. You know, someday we're uh, we're going to have to have a conversation with the people at Equor and, and get this solved about the downtown power situation down there in, in Cremor for sure. We, uh, John, put that on your list. That's another one for us to have a conversation with. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Barry, uh, I know that you've uh, certainly know the downtown at night. Uh, how do you think the lighting is down there? Is, are the street lights sufficient right now in in, in downtown Cremor? Well, it, it, it works, but it's not, it's not dramatic. I mean, it's, it's, you're driving down the street that looks like it's closed down after six o'clock. And that's what, that's exactly what I saw when I watched the, not the video, but this, the slideshow with all the, and it says like, you, you know, you can be all dressed up, but if you're not lit up, it, it looks like you're closed down at six o'clock at night. So there is definitely room for improving on, on, on lighting. I mean, Providing ambient street lighting for, you know, which is mandatory to provide for, yeah, but, but lighting up windows and stuff like that is a, is a whole different game, which is, you know, I've got a wee bit of experience in. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, just, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm a lighting engineer by trade and I specialize in LED lighting and I do, uh, I do museums and, you know, things like Tiffany's and some high end diamond stores and, 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 and uh, Stuff at at uh, several museums, the ROM, and and, and also the the um, oh geez, I'm having a hard time remembering names today. The uh, the Smithsonian. I've done several projects at the Smithsonian, so I do have a wee bit of experience in in lighting. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, perhaps uh, we can maybe have a conversation with you, uh, get some advice about what. Uh, at least some of the technical stuff that we might need if we're going to look at a project like that. That'd be great. Uh, Kelly, I just want to add one thing too. Uh, I, I watched uh, the video. Uh, it's a little over three hours long. I've watched probably two thirds of it anyway. And uh, there was one item in it that, that struck me and I, I sent a message off to Amanda and Terry and I believe I copied you, John, uh, about uh, uh, the brochure uh, being published. They had a, he had a really good recommendation. He said that uh, Roger did that um, uh, a brochure could be published and then you mail it out to all of the residents. And the purpose for mailing it out to all the residents is you attach a card to it and you indicate that 
this has been sent to you so that when you have visitors and family come to visit, you give it to them so that they will see some of the great things in our community. Uh, and uh, that's actually a, a kind of a brilliant idea, isn't it? That all of our residents could get this and know that you know, it's not your idea to keep it. The idea is to give it away to somebody who comes and visits you from, from afar. So uh, I think that, uh, that was an interesting suggestion anyway. So I thought that was a cool piece. Anyway, um, I would encourage everybody to take a chance to, uh, to skim through that video if you want. There's, uh, it's, it's, it's long, but the guy is entertaining, I think. He's, he's got a lot to say. Anyway, so uh, Kelly, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Uh, the one I watched was only about an hour. So he has uh, shortened it down a lot. So I will keep after him to see if I can get the YouTube link for us and I'll share it out to you. Because it yeah, was yeah. very, uh, very <laughs> specific on like getting flowers out, how to get benches out, uh, lighting up your storefronts so that they're shown at night, even if the stores are closed. Like he was very specific on how to get people to dress up your downtown and not not be not be expensive. It should be very economical to do between groups in your town, like our chamber and that sort of thing. Um, I think it, you can we can do a lot to really spruce up our downtowns. Go ahead, John. Thank you, I, I Kelly. I think that's a, a, a tremendous idea. Um, part of the uh, and I think this is what you're working towards. And this is my first meeting, meeting with everybody. So if you're already thinking about these things and forgive me, I'm just not completely familiar with how far along you are. But the idea of the uh, storefront lighting and creating an atmosphere where you create a public place out in front of your stores and people will come and they'll come there because they've got a park bench they can sit on. There is flowers and plants or whatever you can to, to beautify their surroundings. And it makes for an, a nice outdoor experience. And they come down for that experience. And in the meantime, they're participating downtown and they're going to spend money. And uh, so having that attraction in, in those public places that make it where you want to go and sit. Wouldn't, you like, wouldn't it be nice to go sit down in Main Street tonight and just see what's going on? And, and it's a nice place to sit. That really makes a difference. Very good points. Very good points. Um, the other item that uh, that he talked about in the presentation too was about the use of brochures and to not go over heavy with brochures, which made me think of your comment, Jen, last time we met about you know it's okay to print a few things, but really we should have a web presence for uh, for these uh, businesses if we're going to try to promote business and bringing business to this community. So uh, that is certainly something I would like to explore with our Discover Clearview. Uh, website perhaps we can uh, find a little bit more um, uh, Jen have you got any comments on that that uh, have you had a chance to look at our discover clearview website yeah and I, I think it's a great base on which to start building um, I think that uh, I mean generationally print has ha has its place um, I think that it's a great thing to be able to get into new people's homes but I also think that developing our web presence, being able to um, circulate e-newsletters to people, to be able to contact people directly, to be able to drive people into the site and engage with us more authentically would be a really good idea. Awesome. All right, so um, is there a work plan here that we need to uh, have a talk with our webmaster for Discover Clearview? Because I'm just thinking, is that something we should be doing? I do know uh, actually through the BIA, uh, Heather, did. You guys just recently did a revamp on on uh, Creamore. I think that wasn't that happening. I remember Sarah talking about it anyway. A revamp specifically on what? On the uh, the Creamore uh, BIA site, Experience Creamore. Yes. Yeah, we have. We did. Yeah, it's been updated uh, this year. Yeah, that's right. So, um, I don't know if everybody's had to take a look at that one too. We should have a little look at that uh, that website, uh, Experience. Creamore, is that right? Or Creamore Experience? I can't remember. I think we're getting mixed up with um, something else. I will get right back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it is either, but I, I, it's on my computer. I've turned it at it. So. Um, anyway, that's that's good. Yes, go should ahead. We be, um, Sorry. Is there any other, like, should Nottawa not be part of this as well? Like, there is a restaurant and a bit of shopping in Ottawa, like Clearview as a whole. We've got a Make sure we don't leave out any small links. 
I couldn't agree more. And uh, that's exactly what I'm hoping that Discover Fairview is going to do. Uh, I know the Chamber of Commerce also stretches out all over the whole township. Is that right, uh, Kelly? Yes. So uh, we'll certainly do that. Uh, actually, Kelly, I'm, I think the Doorknock is a member. Are they not? I think they're a member of your chamber. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think they have just joined. That's um, right. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're aware, and this is sort of as a side. Um, I'm a web developer. I am showing web creations, but I also own the licensee for uh, shopclearview.ca, which is a business listing for all businesses in Clearview. Then they can list for free. It's already there. We've already been developing it out. We've already been in Shop Stainer and Shop uh, Premore feed into the Shop Clearview. Uh, so that's already been going for quite a number of years. And we're trying to always keep that updated. Um, the other thing that we're doing through the chamber is I, we've started building out a clearviewtourism.ca website to sponsor all of our local um, tourism sites. Uh, we're going to be working with the RTO7. I've already been speaking to Amanda there to see what we can do to pull that in to help for the Clearview tourism. Um, and the other thing that we've been doing uh, is we've already started working on it. I heard in one of the videos you guys were talking about the map. Uh, Amanda and I, uh, from uh, the your tourism office, uh, we've already started working on a uh, restaurant map for Clearview with all the restaurants and the chamber is going to use it as a fundraiser uh, and sell advertising around the outside for the local businesses. So that, and we can hand them out the tourist center in the different uh, areas. Uh, so we're doing that. So we've already started working on a lot of this and Amanda from your tourism office has been just amazing to work with with that and giving us some good advice she is uh certainly a, one of our stellar staff for sure she really is she's so, a sweetheart <laughs> yeah no doubt. okay well listen that's that's really great uh, great to hear kelly thank you for uh, for chipping that in and letting us know i just made a note there that you've got a clearview tourism website so i'm going to take a look at that myself so we're just getting it started right now i'm in the process of building it and the uh cat salvador our vice president is going to actually be retiring from that position and becoming our new admin and she's going to be taking care of uh setting up and getting all the information on there so it's going to be coming over the next month or so okay well this has been really great lots of updates uh, thank you, everybody. I think that's great. And, uh, you know, I, uh, just thinking, uh, just thinking out loud, which is kind of how I do things. Um, that's an awful lot of websites all of a sudden. We need to sort of get them coordinated so that they're connecting, either connecting to each other or, uh, you know, sh sh cross linking with each other. Uh, I think that that's an important aspect about this. Um, and I guess once we settle this out, we'll be able to figure out which one people really want to draw themselves to. And, uh, and find out which one is, uh, is best for that purpose. Um, again, I believe that we're still twofold here. We are uh, both an economic development, as in interested in, in supporting local and small businesses, as well as attracting businesses to this community, and, uh, and also supporting tourism and tourism activities that are supporting business in our community. And then uh, the other goal, of course, that we talked about early on was the fact that we need to do something about housing and uh, try to work a program on on uh, creating some either affordable or some reasonably priced housing for uh, all of our employees who are working in our community. So, so those are the sort of broad reaching things that we need to focus on as a committee. So um, uh, anyway, all of these websites are really helpful for sure in the tourism side. And uh, you know, if we come out of COVID uh, with guns ready, we'll be able to provide a whole lot of uh, uh, services to our community for sure. And that'll be, give an economic boom or boost anyway to the community. So that's what we're hoping to do. Um, anyways, anybody else got anything further on that? Okay. I do want to uh, advise uh, this committee uh, that I reached out to the um, County of Simcoe um, uh, Housing. Uh, Barry, uh, after uh, you and I had a conversation in regards to affordable housing opportunities, I reached out to uh, to um, uh, Raise. Mr., uh, Oh, geez, his name is Bishop. Bishop, that's his name. Great, great guy. Yeah, great guy, Bishop. I reached out to Bishop and had a, had a quick conversation, both a couple of emails and one phone call together. Uh, he's going to do a workshop for members of council to uh, help us uh, flush out that program that uh, our deputy mayor brought forward uh, through our budget process. And uh, that's, that's yet to come. We don't have a date on that yet, Barry, but that's uh, certainly coming. And that'll be something that this committee may want to have a, a, a listen in or check out anyway. 
uh, because we, uh, we will be working down the path of uh, finding an affordable housing for seniors program in Clearview somewhere down the road. So we'll, uh, that's, that's the plan anyway. So I just want to share that with this committee as well. Okay. Does anybody get any new business that uh, they want to bring up? Anything that's, uh, that's happening? Anything around? Yes, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, just uh, new business or announcements, I guess, but whatever we want to call it is, um, oh, I just let me find my notes. And uh, so I'm happy to announce that Huron Tractor finally have their building permit. And uh, they're going to be doing their large expansion uh, to their facility. And it's creating somewhere between four to six new jobs, which is good news. And uh, they're waiting for this lift, this, this lockdown to finish. So they want to get started this spring and get rolling. So um, they, you know, uh, it's, and it's mainly going to be geared towards the agricultural part of it. And it's, it's mainly for uh, the large combines to service them and, and store them and stuff like that. So, so that's, uh, that's great news. It's something's finally going ahead. Council has been working with them to get some permits and give them some breaks on development fees, which uh, I was happy to see council supported that. So that's good. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, about new businesses, one thing that, that, that we are lacking here in Clearby generally is, is, you know, accommodations. And I often wonder, like, we, I, th I think personally it'd be great if we could get like a days in or something, you know, like a, a small motel, hotel, I, you know, I, I don't know what the size has to be to make an end, but with, with meeting rooms, you know, so people can come and have meeting rooms and they can bring catering in and, and stuff like that. What's going on with the Golden Apple, the, the, your worship? Do you know anything about the Golden Apple? Because that <coughs> property is sitting there doing nothing. And, and you, know, I, I, you know, if we could find, if they were interested in buying and selling, then we could, you know, maybe try to find a buyer who wants to develop and do that thing because that's something we really need. It's, and, and, and I think it would be a great asset to Cleary, but especially to Stainer. Um, when people can actually come and stay there. And uh, and often people want to come to the area for Collingwood and Wasega, but all those facilities are booked lots of times. So I, I don't think we would have a, a problem keeping it keeping it filled. Anyways, just my thoughts. Do you know anything about the Golden Apple and what's going on with it? Or I, I haven't had anything uh, updated to me that's anything newer than about three years ago, uh, to be honest. And uh, I know that there was a bit of a renovation done on it to bring it into a Compliance with property standards, as you remember, right. it was a. It was the time there when there was some siding hanging off the building. It's been fixed, which is good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I haven't had anything further uh, come to me. Come to me. Uh, I do know that uh, John, our our CAO, met with a neighboring property, and uh, they're in discussions about a project there. And so uh, it, it's not an accommodation thing, but it is in the neighborhood. So. Uh, certainly as part of the downtown revitalization project that Terry Vachon is leading, uh, we do want to meet with the owners of that building for sure and have a conversation. Um, you know, and, and to be honest, whether that's a proper accommodation facility or not in the downtown core, I think that you'll, uh, you'll see other properties across uh, Stainer area uh, become available. Certainly uh, the commercial lands that are scheduled across the street from the fire hall are, uh, you know, slated to be commercial lands, and that would be commercial potential for commercial uh, motel, like you suggest. Uh, that's that's a possibility. Um, so that's something we have to we have to keep investigating and keep our ears open on that too. But uh, no, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, before COVID, I had a conversation with the folks at uh, at Stainer Siskins Hockey, and uh, and they. <laughs> They pointed out that it's really difficult that, uh, you know, when minor hockey wants to hold a, a tournament that all the visiting teams have to stay somewhere else. You know, they can't stay in our own community because they don't have a proper facilities for a little minor hockey team for their parents and kids to all stay. So uh, it's frustrating for sure. So uh, anyway, uh, I agree with you. We do have to keep that, uh, keep an ear open on that. And we should talk to the property owners. Uh, and, see what I, doing. And, and, and personally, I think, I've been to some of, you know, villages and towns similar to Stainer and, and you know, in, in the original hotels, motels were on the main street. Yeah. And, and I think that really adds to the, 
you know, when you build something out at the edge of town, that's one thing, but when you actually, it's on the main street and you do something that's classy and, you know, that fits in and, 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 and like that, you, you want it to architecturally fit in and all that. But I think then people are walking out the door and going to, you know, they're walking within the town Then they don't have to get out and drive somewhere where if, Typically, you put something out at the edge of town, you know, hotel or motel, you got to get in your car, you got to drive to the pub or drive to wherever it is you're going. So, so I, I, I think it's something we should really uh, maybe try to focus on is just, just getting a feel for what he wants to do with that property. Yeah, I think you're right. Perhaps uh, with the CAO and myself, we can arrange to meet the, the owners and have conversations. And see what's going on. That's, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. Anybody got anything else that they'd like to add for underneath new business or announcements? Kelly, I see you got your hand up. Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, back when we, they were supposed to have the big event down at Edenville, uh, there was talk about them making that into a campground. Did that ever keep going that they were going to use that for a campground area? Uh, Kelly, I desperately hope not. Okay. <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would be really difficult to have a, an aviation park and a campground in the same place. That's two cross ref, you know, uses. Uh, there are some operational problems with the airport and the municipality because the airport is federally regulated. So they get away with a lot of things federally that um, other business owners can't. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, but camping would not be permitted on that property underneath aviation. So uh, I, I believe that that big special event was going to be a um, sort of a, a one-off event and they would have a, a temporary use zoning permit to allow the concert and uh, that concert of course didn't happen because the company went bankrupt but uh, yeah. they were moving in the direction that they were going to be given temporary ability to do that nothing would have been permanent that's for sure so. okay so does Clearview have a campground anywhere certainly down in New Lowell yeah there is, I, okay, because I was looking and I couldn't see where there would be a, a campground because a lot of times we used to do a lot of RVing and if you can get a campground, again, closer to your downtown core or to one of your downtowns, uh, it makes a great place for, you know, your need, want something, you run into town and you eat in the restaurants and all that sort of thing. So I was just wondering if there's any ideas for maybe campgrounds to bring in tourism. Yeah. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one one place that I have been going to for fifty some odd years. I've been going to that, and that's uh, Rothers Park, and that's a fifty acre park. And at one time, they had camping in there, not not trailers and stuff, but camping. They actually had campgrounds and you know outhouses and and stuff like that. I mean, it's not a bad idea. You know, it's a, you know you're talking about investing some money, you know, in, into the if, but you always have to look at, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in you got to spend money to make money, you know, and, and you need to invest, you know, money into things like that. But I mean, maybe that's a place worth looking at to see if, uh, you know, Carruthers would be a place to set up. Maybe, maybe, you know, I think it had 25 sites or something like that. It wasn't a huge campsite, but it was, you know, it, it was, it's a great park, wonderful park. It's got a gazebo in it. It's, uh, it's right on the Mad River, right? Take my grandson fishing there every year, you know, and uh, is he catches something and I catch nothing. You know, that's always the way. Yeah. Is it private owned or public owned? No, we own it. Clearview owns it. Oh, okay. Own. Yeah. There are quite a few large campground companies around. I was just wondering if it might be that we could reach out to one of them, like Carefree or something, to see if they're interested in maybe investing in Clearview and putting in a campground here. Very good possibility. Interesting thought. You, you, the Yogi Bear campgrounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's enough of them out there. If we can sort of give them an uh, an area that's close to one of our downtowns or close to one of our natural resources that would draw people there, it's another great tourism uh, thing that we can do, and it brings people into town. And, and, and there's a lot of campers that are looking for the less commercialized campsites, right? And, and, and to me... A place like Carruthers wouldn't take a whole lot to turn it into, you know, if you took it into like, you know, roughing it campsite type thing. And, uh, you know, you got your campsite, you bring your tents, you know, obviously you have to have some washrooms there. But uh, I, other than that, and it would, and I say it would strictly, my thoughts would be make it strictly tent camping rather than, or tent, tent trailers, but not to allow big, you know, 
you understand what I'm saying, big campers in there, but you know, those are, but yeah, it's a great, I mean, I, I was a scout leader in Alliston for many years and I used to take my scouts camping there and uh, we used to camp there. And that's why I say I've been going there for many years. It's a, it's a, it's a great park and great, very under, underutilized, you know, and it's uh, to, to me, one of the nicest parks that we have in, in Clearview. I'll take you to it, John. I think, I think I think campgrounds add a tremendous amount to the economy. They really do. Yeah. Especially if you can get them close enough, they will. They 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 spend every day. Yeah. And evening is so close to Creemore, right? Mm. It's it's yeah. you know, so it's but you gotta pick the right spot and yeah. uh, and you can even as you say, you may not have you should you, you may want to be able to provide water. If yeah. you can't provide sewer, for example, you can always set up the honey wagons, so to speak, and right. that can service it. As long right. as they know they can dump their tank somewhere and that can be disposed of properly. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's, it, it's, it's something to look into. Yeah, for sure. I'm always looking at ways we can partner with businesses that are already out there. So if, if we can come up with a property that might be a great one for a campground, then we can maybe reach out to some of these larger uh, like like you said, the Yogi Bear campgrounds or the Carefree campgrounds, that sort of thing, and maybe offers you know some property that they might be interested in looking at um, for the for the hotels. Same thing, we should be maybe reaching out to you know some of the hotel chains. What would it take to get you to put a hotel here? That sort yeah. of thing, right? Well, I gotta tell you this this com sorry, does someone else want to go ahead? No, okay. I got to tell you, this uh, Kelly actually brings up a really good point, something that I'd like to bring to our meeting next meeting. Uh, I was hoping that uh, through the CAO, we could ask someone from our uh, planning and development uh, department, perhaps Mara Burton herself, to come and attend and give us a little bit of an update on some of the, uh, uh, the plans for, the, uh, for some lands across the township. That might help answer some of your questions, Kelly, about, uh, about what areas could be a possible campground. It's... Uh, no, that type of thing has to be zoned correctly. So it has to fit the correct zoning of the whole overall community. And then the other aspect, we will we'll get it a better up, an idea about what uh, uh, multi-residential facilities could be available across the township as well, what properties could be multi-residential. Uh, so um, maybe that would be something we could uh, schedule through uh, use, Mr. CAO. We can have a of uh, Mara drop into the meeting and give us a little bit of a presentation. So the members here are at least up to date on, uh, on some of the planning opportunities. Does that sound fair? Sure. Okay. All righty. That's what I'm hoping to see. All right. Anybody else with any other uh, new business or announcements? Okay. I'll just uh, give one shout out since we're uh, doing this on YouTube. Um, over the weekend, I had a call from Pamela McKee, who's uh, uh, kind of a friend of mine. She's up in the Duntroon area, and she relaunched her company, Pamela McKee Photography, and wanted uh, me to tweet it out. So I tweeted it out a couple times for her, and uh, it's always nice to, when a business uh, reaches out to me and asks me to do that. I'm happy to do that uh, to help them uh, promote their local business. So uh, I just want to mention that uh, she did that. And, uh, and uh, there's a, a little photographer company who's expanding her business and doing doing uh, portraits and put a uh, recent Facebook ad out, I think for, uh, for graduation photos, you know, the kids want to get their graduation picture taken. So good for her. So anyway, this is a shout out to some local businesses. Anybody else for the uh, good of the meeting? Anything else? All right. We'll see you all on June. The first is our next official uh, gathering June the first. And uh, so I'll call for an adjournment recommendation be resolved. The Clearview Economic Development Advisory Committee be adjourned at 5 11 p.m. And mover and seconder, Barry's got his hand up quick. Judith has got her hand up second. All those in favor. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, that's great. It's good to have the entire. Yes, Barry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just waving goodbye. Waving. Okay. <laughs> great to have everybody here and uh, great to have our full committee here. So we'll, uh, we'll get right to work. Thanks, guys. See ya. Have a good Thank one. You.